Hi folks and welcome back to Fishing with Den. Well today I'm going to be showing you how to cope with a wind when you waggler fishing. Now if you're new to the sport and you've not used the waggler too much, um, because it's fixed bottom end only, what happens is um, it hits the water and then the wind which is going left to right in this case takes the float and it moves it across in front of you. That makes it be the bait behave unnaturally and of course when it does that you don't get any bites. So what's the answer? Well that's what I'm going to show you today. So first of all then, let's show you the pond. This is Den's Pond, and for those of you who watch my videos regularly, you're going to know that I, I come down here quite a lot, mostly to test out new techniques and, uh, and tactics, because I pretty much know what I'm going to catch. And as you can see today, the wind is quite strong, uh, and it's blowing from left to right across the pond, and into the bank over there. Now it does actually go around the corner here as well, but that's pretty shallow so I won't be fishing in there today. The idea is that we'll be fishing towards that telegraph pole in the, the background and off to the right across that way. Now of course when I start off the, the thing I'm going to show you is uh, uh, how you would normally fish this thing with the bait just touching the bottom um, and of course with that being the case today, that's just not going to work. Um, we're also going to need a, a heavier float, so again, we'll talk about that in a second. So on a nice calm day, I'd probably be using something like this uh, little waggler here. Reasonably small because it's only um, a short distance to cast and also fairly shallow. This is probably about 3 bb. Having said that, I'm going to actually go much bigger than that today. I'm going to go up to 3 AAA shot which is around about three grams, this being uh, just over one gram. So as you can see, I'm already going up by three times the size, and that may or may not work. So let's cast the, the three gram waggler out and see how that responds when it's just set at dead depth. And dead depth, of course, means just touching the bait on the bottom. OK, then we're all set up, got the waggler on, got some shot down as I normally would, got a single piece of sweet corn on, and I'm just touching the bottom. Now if I cast out, and obviously this wind is going left to right, there we go. Okay, so as you can see I've just cast in, and obviously it's moving slowly, but you will notice that the float is moving from left to right. Now over a period of about 30 seconds, that's moving the best part of a metre or so, and it's going in the same direction as the wind. That is, obviously, from left to right. Now, having said that, quite often, as we mentioned before, the, the top surface may be going left to right, but when it hits that bank over there, it has to go somewhere, so it tends to curl under, and the bottom layer goes back this way. So the idea is to try and either slow the float right down, or to make it stop altogether. And, obviously, it's not going to work very well like this, because we're just touching the bottom, and we're just moving along with the surface layers. So here's what we do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add six inches to the depth. Now remember, originally the bait was just touching the bottom. Now it's going to be laid on by about six inches. So I'll just move up the, the shots. There we go. And now what's going to happen is that the bait itself is going to be on the bottom. This little telltale shot here is going to be on the bottom and a small amount of line. The idea is, of course, to just drag it along the bottom and slow everything down. Doesn't always work first time, this is a question of trial and error. So let's get the thing back out there and try again. Okay, so as you can see, the float's now going through a lot more slowly, but it's still going the same direction as the wind. Sometimes you can't help that, but if it's possible, try and get it to go the other way or to stand still. So what we're going to do is a bit more adjustment. And now we're going to add on another few inches. Onto the float. Just give another three or four inches. And we're going to take this shot off and put it on to the, the hook length. Now make sure your hook lengths are reasonable 
braking strain, the really fine hook lengths don't really like this sort of thing. Okay, well it took me a little bit of time to get this stops shot off, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on so it's about three inches above the other one. And now what we're going to be doing then is to drag on from the hook this one and this one and a little bit more line here. And hopefully that should slow it down again. And bear in mind that if you're using a bait like sweet corn, that's also got some weight to it as well, so that helps. Let's get it out there and see what happens. Okay, so again, we're now slowing the float right down. And because I'm doing that, that's more natural to the fish, and therefore, they're more likely to take the bait. Now bear in mind, obviously, with a, a pond like this, which is really shallow, you won't always get that same undertow, so you may not always get it going that way. But if you can slow it down to this sort of extent, then you've got a good chance of getting a bite. Now, obviously, I haven't even started fishing properly yet because I've been doing this. So now I'm going to start putting a little bit of bait in, and let's see if we can catch a few. As you can see, the, the floaters have actually uh, pretty much stopped now. There's a very small amount of movement from left to right, but that's perfectly acceptable because the, the currents move things around on the bottom anyway, and the fish should accept the bait as it stands. Now, having said that, you can probably see that my float's sticking out a bit more than it normally does, and that's because we've got the two shots on the bottom as well. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another uh, shot on the line and just see if I can just get the float just to perform. Oh, got a bite. <laughs> Well, well, well. There you are, trying to do a video. Get rudely interrupted by fish. So, just goes to show it does work. And let's grab the landing net. We're not quite ready for this yet. But there we go. Just goes to show that that does work. Nice fish and it has actually swallowed it. There we go, good start. Okay, well, before I was so rudely interrupted by that fish, I was gonna change the, the rig. Obviously it's working okay fine at the moment, but I just wanna see if I can refine it just a little bit. So I'm gonna put this shot on. Up the line, so I've got the bulk, the first dropper, second dropper, and then the two dragging on shot here. Now that should just dot the float down a little bit more. You don't actually need to do this too much, as long as the float's behaving naturally, you shouldn't have too many problems, but it's always nice to get the float to sit at a reasonable sort of height above the water. You don't want too much sticking out, otherwise it tends to uh, come up and then it'll sort of lie flat and woggle around and do all sorts of stuff that you don't necessarily want it to do. There we go. So, let's see what we can do from here. So we're cast in again, the thing's settled, and you can now see that we've just got the, the centimetre or so of the black tip showing, and just a very small amount of the, the yellow. So we're slightly overshotted, but um, we're not having any problems with that. And this is all about trial and error. You have to get it so that the, the float sits correctly, the bait moves naturally, and that does require a little bit of trial and error sometimes, it's just something you have to accept if you want to get it right and catch plenty of fish. So we've got to a point now where the wind has got to such a strength that it's going from left to right and when it gets down to that bank down there it comes underneath and it creates that undertow. So the bottom layer of water is actually going in that direction as I mentioned before and that's what we wanted. So therefore my float is going that way too. If my float was still going the same direction as the wind that would be wrong and I'd probably catch no fish or at least very few. Now something to be aware of is that uh, you may find that during the course of the day the wind does get stronger as it is at the moment. Now as things stand, the float's coping very well, um, it's no real problem for me, but if it does get any uh, more powerful then we're going to have to do something about it. That could mean either dragging another shot on the bottom or even possibly heavier shots. At the moment I've got those two number six shots that are dragging the bottom and of course the, the bait itself but you might also have to consider going to a heavier float. Not the least reason, of course, is that when you cast out there, sometimes with the wind going that way, the float just gets taken away by the wind. So a heavier float may make it easier for you to, uh, to achieve the accuracy you need. Still, having said that, at the moment, we're not doing too badly, so we'll carry on as we are. 
Just a couple of things to bear in mind as well folks. When you're casting out in a wind and it's going from left to right as we've seen, then obviously if you just give it a gentle lob, the whole thing is just going to go over that way and you're going to get a huge bow in the line. The idea is to put your finger on the spool as the thing hits the water to stop any more line uh, going out and creating that huge bow as I've just said. You have to give it a good directional punch like that and then just a couple of quick turns on the reel just to get the line to sink. I've also got the, the tip under the water because the last thing you want is a bow to form. Now admittedly when it's windy like this it's not like the uh, conditions I showed you previously where it was um, just like a sheet of, of glass and there was a surface skim. Um, this because it's windy doesn't really have the same surface skim but just a couple of turns on the reel just to bring it back into position will actually make sure the line sinks and gets below that uh, surface toe. Another thing to bear in mind folks is that you don't want to be casting too far out on a windy day unless you really really have to but the problem with that is that you've got so much line out that the bow that forms may well um, just be something that you can't cope with. You may be ending up at sort of seven or nine gram floats. It's possible to do but it does take some experience to be able to cope with those conditions and so my suggestion would be, I mean I'm probably fishing uh, 12 to 15 meters out at the moment and I'm catching fish so that works for me. Slightly bigger fish this time, probably an ordinary carp rather than one of those uh, goldfishy ones. Yeah let's take it easy. give up does he? I well, can't blame him I suppose. And there we go. something going on but very tentative. You've got to bear in mind that you've got quite a lot of line on the bottom so it will require the fish to move somewhat and I think that's it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Quite a small one this one actually. There he is. Working there folks. Well, you probably can't see anything out of that one now. <laughs> that's that's looking. Yeah, gorgeous. So that's it then, folks. That's how you control your float and your bait in a strong crosswind. Now, obviously, as I've said, it takes a little bit of trial and error. You'll need to do it a few times before you get it right. And bear in mind that sometimes the wind and the undertow can be just too much to use a waggler. Um, you can go up to say seven or nine gram floats and even then if it's howling a gale it just won't work and that's when you either change over to a, a ledger a feeder or a thing called a float ledger but hey that's another story isn't it so we'll do that another day anyway i hope you enjoyed it and if you did don't forget click the like button if you want to subscribe you can do that too and until the next time bye for now <laughs>